In CellBip, the listening module is typically the easiest one, but a lot of people struggle with that. And when people struggle, they say that we struggle with reading and listening. So I hear this very commonly and I don't hear a mixture of, you know, I struggle with writing and listening or speaking and listening. When you say you struggle with reading and listening, it means you have a problem or a weakness, if I want to be polite, uh, in getting the information. When you listen to something or you read something, you maybe lack attention, you maybe drift off, or you're just not able to get what other people are trying to say. And there's a number of reasons for this. So we're going to look at uh, how we're going to tackle those. Now, with that said, I've made many listening videos. You can check them out on our channel. In fact, there's a link off of, to one of them in the description. There's also a playlist for everything, reading, listening, writing, speaking, which is all in the description. So always check out my descriptions. They are very useful with good material. But uh, in this video, I'm gonna discuss listening parts five and six, cause they are the hardest parts. That's where people get really stuck at. So when we talk about listening part five, we're talking about the video where you have two, three, or sometimes four people arguing, debating, or they're just talking about some topic. Now, this is on your screen, a sample of how you're supposed to take notes. And we're gonna break it down into multiple parts. So first of all, you wanna make columns, okay? Commonly, you have three people talking. So as you can see on the screen, we have columns one, two, and three. Under each column, you simply write what the person is saying, okay? And you are doing this while the audio is being played. You don't see the questions when they're self-pip listing, you will see them after. So your job is to make amazing notes. Now, if you organize them in three columns, you know exactly what each person is saying. When you face the questions, a lot of questions are gonna ask you, what did this person say? What did that person say? So it's important there. And also they would ask you, how did this person respond to that person? Or what did this person say after the other person said that? So you really need to know what each person says. So you have to separate that information. That's very important. Uh, don't just put everything in one sheet. So making columns is important. And these lines you see here are just examples. So that's where you put your notes, for example. So now let's look at the next thing, which is the sequence. Luckily, most of the listening tests in CellPip are in sequence, which means if you have a two minute listening, then you have the first 30 seconds in questions one and two, next 30 seconds, question two and three, and so on. So sequence is important to see the number of, uh, to see where, which question, for which question, which transcript part you have to look at or which notes you have to look at. So sequencing is good. It also keeps your information organized. You can see from your notes, the train and the flow of the conversation, how they were responding, how it go went from A to Z. Now, the next thing is arrows. When you write a note, I wrote this here, then I'm gonna make an arrow right after that, okay? And then another arrow and then another arrow. What this shows is how did this person, the second one, respond to the first person? Then how did the next person respond to the second person and so on. But you may say that, well, we have the sequence, right? So we know how the other person responded to the comments, but how did they respond to which comment? That's important to know as well. For example, in the first case, the first person just said one thing. So here's the response, fine. But in the second column, you can see the person said two different things. This could be two separate sentences. It could be two different points, two arguments, whatever. Basically, this was two separate things that were said. And the third person that responded with the first comment that they made was on the second comment made by the second person. So that's what the arrows tell me, which comment is being responded to. Now, if you see here, the arrow goes from the third person's second comment to the first person's first comment, showing me that their answer is based on what comment exactly. So doing this is helpful, why? You get questions asking you, how did this person respond to the other person when they said this? Or, or what does Sally think of Mark's uh, something? And then that something would be one of the comments and then you wanna see how Sally responded to that. So making arrows helps you really well in again, understanding it and getting the answers to those questions if they ask specifically for those things. One thing I wanna mention, I didn't make a PDF for it, but I just remembered I should have maybe. Some people write here, guy with glasses or lady with red shirt and so on. Don't waste your time, okay? You can see that. You will never forget that, most likely, unless you have really bad observation. 
most likely you will see that. So no need to write those things. And uh, yeah, just save your notes for what is being said. Okay. But that is again, important too, because important to remember, uh, because they also ask you, what did the guy with the red shirt say? What did the lady with the glasses say? Said. So make sure you look at who is saying what. But again, if you have these columns, you know that Sally is the one wearing the red shirt. Mark is the one with the glasses. So it's not that hard. Coming to part six. Now we're in this territory with part six. Part six is viewpoints. So here is where people debate. They have different points of view. It could be two. Usually it's two points of views. Okay. It's like one person is really negative about something. The other person is really positive. If that's the case, you make two columns. However, in this case, what I'm trying to show you is three different points of views that were discussed, for example. And what happens is there's, for example, uh, talking about overfishing. Okay. We're discussing that. And there's this person, this group that really supports it, supports it. And these are all the points for that. And then they talk about the other group that does not support it and see how I am only on the left side of my paper. I'll tell you later why this is important. So I'm talking about or writing notes on everything that this opposite group is saying. So I'm writing here and then I continue on the right side of the page. Okay. So I'm continuing here and now they introduce a third group. So I now make a separate column for them. This is literally the lines you're going to make in the exam to separate information. So now this is the third column for them. And this is what the neutral group says. So now I have my notes. When I see the questions, I'm super organized. I know that this one is positive. This is negative, And this is neutral. And when I get questions like who said what, or how did this person disagree with that person? Or what's the neutral opinion? I know which column to look for. It's also in sequence. It keeps me really well organized. Now why I did everything on the left side of the paper is because sometimes at the end, you're paper is about to get full uh, in between list and, and during the listening, you cannot ask for another paper. If you do, you're gonna, just going to miss a lot of time when they're speaking. And sometimes the invigilator is slow in providing you the piece of paper. So we don't know how long the listening is going to be. Let's just make sure we have enough room on each side. So that's why we're not using the whole paper at the same time by doing this. It's way more organized than if you were to do few points here than a few points here, because if you do that, you don't see the sequence. The sequence should be top to bottom. Okay. So you do a few notes and then uh, the, the other notes are going to go at the bottom and then continue here. It's much better than doing notes here and then here and then going down. It's going to be very hard to read. And again, notes are supposed to be small sentences that give you hints. They're not long sentences, so they should be occupying half the page. If you write long sentences, you will run out of time because you just don't have that time. Remember also, don't just rely on writing everything because it's impossible in part six that you will be able to write everything. They're going to be fast and no human can write that fast. Okay. So you want to make sure you use your memory as well. You have to write a lot of things. I would also remember the things that you were not able to write. It does require multitasking, but you have to use a combination of your memory and your notes to remember what was said to answer the questions later. Finally, draw pictures too. Don't just write things, draw pictures. They are faster than writing sometimes. For example, if they tell you, you know, this one has to be these many millimeters and this much uh, length, you have to write those things down. You won't remember the numbers, but you can make pictures when, for example, this person says overfishing is killing a huge population in this large area of river. And uh, if we go there, then we might not have any fish at all. Instead of me writing all of this, I could just draw like two wavy lines indicating that there's water, put a fish there, just a quick fish, like an oval sign, and just put a cross on that. And that will tell me, okay, this is the big water that they were talking about. There's no more fish there. If we overfish, see how fast that is instead of me writing the whole thing. So use pictures as well, not only in part six, but in all the parts. However, very importantly in part six, because that is where you have to find strategies to remember with memory, take pictures and take notes to get all that information because it's going to be the fastest listening part among all six. All right. So do remember these strategies for parts five and six. They are the challenging ones in listening, but if you can overcome them using these strategies, you should be okay. And you should be scoring a good mark in the cell pip test. If you need more tips and tricks, check out the link in the description for our cell pip 15 hour course at a 20% discount. 
If you go there to the chat, if you have any questions, you can ask us via chat or email. You also have reviews, class videos, a lot of great content in that course. So check it out and we'll talk very soon. Take care.